The allegations in the Globe story this morning are false. Her presence in Cabinet uh, should actually speak for itself. I continue to be puzzled uh, and obviously disappointed by her decision to step down from Cabinet. We believe in the independence of the judiciary and we believe uh, in fighting for good jobs and we will always do that in the right way. I strongly maintain, as I have from the beginning, that I and my staff always acted appropriately and professionally. Over the past months, there was an erosion of trust between my office and specifically my former principal secretary and the former Minister of Justice and Attorney General. So the Prime Minister's narrative has changed over the past month since the SNC-Lavalin story first broke. But today, Justin Trudeau gave his first full press conference all about this issue and expressed some regret. Was it enough? It's Thursday and at issue is back. This is a regular time slot. Chantelle Bear is in Montreal. Andrew Coyne is in Vancouver tonight. And Chachi Curl is in Toronto with us. Okay, uh, I thought that was very eff effective to see those different clips just over the past month in terms of how the answers have shifted shifted a little bit. Let's just start with, with today. Uh, when we were sort of warned or told that we might get some sort of um, act of contrition or message of contrition, I'm not sure that that's what I expected. Chantal, what did you make of it? I thought the contrition thing was out the window after I listened to Gerald Butts' uh, narrative yesterday because, it, and uh, the clerk of the Privy Council and the Deputy Minister of Justice, all three agreed that uh, they felt that nothing inappropriate had taken place. I had a hard time seeing how Justin Trudeau could come and nail down a narrative that would have have a, a, a major act of contrition if no one regrets anything uh, major in this story. So I thought format counts uh, and the fact that the press conference took place in a setting that looked uh, less on the fly probably will help. Uh, I'm not sure that the content uh, of what Mr. Trudeau had to say resists uh, uh, analysis, but uh, I think we can take the message from it that the government, after all this, has come down to a narrative and they will hang on to it now come hell or high water. So it seemed like there, of, the, of the, the language from that, this was about lessons learned, Andrew. And when he was asked very directly if he was apologizing for anything today, he said, uh, I, I'm just going to continue to say there was no inappropriate pressure. Was, were those kinds of answers enough for, for what he needed to do today? Uh, it depends what your strategy is. I mean, their strategy, as Chantel says, is to, to stonewall in committee, to uh, admit no serious fault. I mean, he treated it as if it was just kind of an HR problem with a couple of squabbling employees, but not anything, nobody done anything actually wrong, nothing he had to apologize or even take responsibility for, certainly not explain in any detail. Uh, so that, I agree, is probably the, the message they're going to stick with. It's, it's Rather than admitting they did anything wrong, yeah. they are certainly admitting to everything that uh, Jody Wilson and Raybould said they did, I mean, except for a couple of things, a couple of the more incriminating quotes. But in the broad particulars, yeah, they're saying, yeah, we did it, but we had good reasons to do it. We were saving jobs, or she, didn't, she wasn't up to the job, or whatever their excuse is going to be. They're basically trying to normalize their behavior rather than apologizing for it. But, but they did, to be fair, they, they did say we're going to go seek some advice on whether these the AG and the justice minister roles should be divided. We're going to seek some advice on how we deal with these matters with our office. Is that not an admission in some way that, that they, they realize that maybe things weren't done exactly as they should have been? Is that you not how you read that? That yeah. would be the logical implication, but they will certainly not acknowledge that. They will certainly not admit that. And if pressed, they will say we were we were just trying to save jobs. Okay, Shanti, so let's uh, yeah, go ahead, Chantal, quickly. And, and in, in in acknowledging the same basic facts, what they are doing is protecting uh, the PMO and the Prime Minister from a second Jody Wilson Raybould appearance. Uh, because they have not given her a lot of uh, facts to say this is not true since yeah. they bought into her facts. Uh, Shachi, how do you think what the message he delivered translated today? Well, this is about trying to turn the page, and uh, Justin Trudeau and his government would like to be talking about anything other than this right now. So we started to see a, a little bit of the jobs, jobs, jobs refrain in mantra in earlier statements. I think we heard a lot about it from Gerald Butts yesterday. If you missed it, he's happy to tell you about it again. <laughs> and then the, the big double down on the 
gamble that the Canadian public will be more uh, accepting of and find a message that resonates better on defending jobs than it does on, hey, actually, it turns out that I am not Mr. Empathy. I'm actually not a great manager, and uh, I, I'll do better on the shop floor next time. Yeah. That's not the statement that people really want to hear. Uh, it certainly, as we've talked about at length, continues to be a confirmation that his own brand is damaged around this. So you know what? Forget about that story, Canadians. Focus on a new story. So, so when 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 he said today, uh, I wish Jody Wilson Raybould would have come to me and and told me these things. And he talked about uh, you know he needs to have better communication between caucus and cabinet. And he talked about an erosion of trust. That, is that does that not speak to his leadership though? I mean, I, I, it seemed curious to me that all the onus was being put on everybody else for not coming to him. And I, I maybe he's just not that kind of manager. I don't know. But Andrew, well, how did you read that? Absolutely, because she did come to him. She came to the clerk. She came to the minister of finance. She came. She talked to two of his officials in the prime minister's office. She talked to Butts. So this narrative that she never told anybody anything is just absolutely out the window unless they're going to pretend that she's made all of these quotes up. Maybe they are, but they don't want to say so because, you know, that gets them into dangerous territory as well. So, yeah, there was a pretty broad scale effort, if you believe Jody Wilson and Sarah Bolt's ter testimony, and they seem to have acknowledged it from, in, in, without admitting any kind of culpability. There was a pretty broad range effort to try and get her to change her mind or to, to move her off her position or what have you. Um, that is set at the top. The culture that says, you know, independence of the Attorney General, independence of prosecutor, uh, prosecutorial discretion, these are not really fundamental principles. They're kind of contingent on whether we need to get elected or whether we're worried about jobs or what have you. Uh, that culture is set from the top, and he absolutely should be accepting responsibility for that. And instead, as you say, basically treated as if it was it was a problem of quarrelsome employees. Chantal, I'm not going uh, to go into uh, legality versus uh, public interest, sure. but I do have uh, the same problem with that section of, of the prime minister's statement, which is the core of his statement, uh, and that is the notion that there was an erosion of trust, but not at his level. And so, why did not? Sh why did she not come to me? I was listening to that, and I remember it. I was around, sadly, uh, for my age, that when Lucien Bouchard resigned over yeah. something much bigger and in a way that was, was much more definitive. And he took time out to say, Brian Mulroney's palace guard had isolated him from Brian Mulroney. He never, ever took shots at Brian Mulroney in the way that Jody Wilson-Raywald implicated the prime minister directly and personally. So I'd have to say, yes, if there was erosion of trust, that's probably true. But it starts at the top and not down the food chain. OK, so what happens next with this? I mean, Andrew Scheer came out again today saying, oh, I, I still think he should resign. It didn't, it didn't, you know, he, he wasn't able to say much more. But I am perplexed as to how this story doesn't start losing steam next week. Uh, the House isn't sitting. There's no committee meeting. What does the opposition have to do? What kinds of things might they do to try and keep this, uh, this going and people thinking about it? Chachi, what do you think? They don't have to do too much to keep this going. Remember that, that there is always the drip, drip, drip that comes from us talking about this, from the op-eds that are going to be written, from the social media posts that go on. And so there, there is uh, almost a permanent virality to, to this uh, story. So yes, a week gives the government a bit of breathing space, provided nothing else comes out. Goodness knows what else is going to come out at this point. Uh, you know, the, the conventional wisdom might be, well, the worst is over, but you never know. Uh, the other piece of it, of course, is that they have an opportunity to try and change the message, although, you know, today was, was uh, an unfortunate example of trying to do that, and then in the end, the PM couldn't get up north to issue the apology on tuberculosis that he had wanted to do. That said, you know, for Andrew Scheer, there is a real moment here. There, there is uh, a, a situation where his party is now leading in the polls. He has a chance to seize high ground on the trust issue, on the integrity issue, on the morality issue. So far what we've seen him say is the Prime Minister must resign and the Prime Minister says no. 
I'm not going to do that. So I, I think it's time for him to start changing the message a little bit less around what did you know, Prime Minister, and when did you know it, and more on taking his case directly to the electorate and saying, you know what, this guy can't be trusted. I can defend jobs and maintain the independence of, of the judicial system uh, and not turn it into a mess. Okay, um, one, I think uh, there is a, a real chance that Canadians are going to start tuning out. They're going to say, I heard this and I heard that. Uh, two, I think there is a real risk for the opposition to continue to prosecute that to the expense of uh, other issues. And one of the reasons for that is I remember, it's very recent, how good uh, Thomas Mulcair was at prosecuting the Senate yep. scandal in the House of Commons. But at the end of the day, I think that uh, Thomas Mulcair only won a job uh, demotion in opposition for that. And Andrew Scheer has to fit himself in the frame of prime minister. Because once people, having seen all this, say, well, I'm not so sure that Justin Trudeau is the man for this. Mm -hmm. They're going to look at Andrew Scheer, and I don't think that he has uh, fit himself in that frame. And to just count on people saying, we're not going to want Justin Trudeau because of SNC-Lavalin, and we're going to go to Andrew Scheer, I think there's a real risk for the opposition in that. Andrew, last word to you on this. I think this is a moment when the public interest and the opposition's political interest align, which is that we need answers and we need to get to the bottom of this. This is big stuff. This is not about games or jobs or managerial. It's about the integrity of our judicial and our prosecutorial system. We have got a system for in looking into this through the, judi the Justice Committee that is deeply flawed. We've heard from Jody Wilson-Raybould once, but we've heard from Wernick twice. She was allowed to say some things. Jerry Butts was allowed to say much more. We haven't heard from all kinds of people who were deeply involved in this and could tell us much more. I don't think that, the, that this kind of stonewalling should be allowed to proceed. I think the opposition will be well within their rights to say we're going to hold up parliamentary proceedings until we get some answers and we, until we get a transparent process for digging into this. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you, everybody. Thanks to the two of you for coming three times. Shachi, for, thanks for coming out for the last edition this week. Before we go, be sure to subscribe to At Issue, the podcast for extra content. This week, we're going to continue talking about the snc level and crisis, and particularly about the use of those deferred prosecution agreements. Look for it on iTunes, any major podcast app, our website, cbcnews.ca slash the national.